Reverend Buire asked me to talk about being immersed in his presence. And that's what we're going to look at today. And, um, there are things that are very important for us to be, you know, we can talk about being in his presence and talk about the vine and the branch. And this can be an abstract thing, something that we, you know, it is just another theme that we go through. And we finish and another theme comes. But this, this year, God is getting personal with us. God is saying, I have not invited you to rituals. I've invited you to myself. I want a relationship. So when we talk about in his presence, could it be that God is sensing that we, are beca we had become distant from him. And he's saying, just come, come. God is an amazing God. You know, if we are to understand, when Jesus was being asked, whether it was okay to divorce, he says it was not so in the beginning. And if we are to understand what's, what God had in mind when he created us, we've got to go to the beginning. And when you go to the beginning, in Genesis chapter one, and you look through Creation. He repeats again in chapter 5. We see that God intended relationship. God wanted relationship. God is a relational being. And in his presence, talks about relationship. And we cannot be immersed. Immersion. I think when we think immersion, we're talking about, we, we, we think about baptism. In baptism, we are immersed in water. That water engulfs us, you know, swallows us. And, and there's no part of us that that water does not touch. And when we say we are immersed in his presence, there's no part of us that is not in God. You know, you see, God, when God created humankind in his image and in his likeness, we relate easily with people who look like us. And so God had this in mind. He wanted a being that he can relate with. And the only way he can relate with in the kind of intimacy that God was desiring, he had to create a being that looked like him, that was like him. It's interesting that David says we are gods. And Jesus actually says the same when he's accused in John chapter 5, for calling God his father. The Bible says when he, you know, he said, he, ref, he said God is his father. And John says when Jesus says God is his father, he is also claiming to be God himself. And do you know what is interesting in the book of John chapter 1? The Bible says those who receive Jesus are given the right to become children of God. Are you getting this? 
when Jesus claims to be the son of God, the ancient Middle Eastern culture, the Jewish knew what that meant. That he was also a God. And when we are given the right to become children of God, we are gods. You may never understand what that means. This relationship that we are being invited into is a relationship that has legal, you know, sense in it. The right, the right. You've been given the right to be called children of God. I've gone ahead of myself. We've been focusing on John chapter 14 and 15. And these are very important. This is very important text in the Bible. Why? This is a conversation that happens in the upper room after they had had the Last Supper together. Jesus and his disciples. Jesus is about to die. So these are the last words of Jesus. And he was with the core. The people that he was going to pass. The people that were going to continue with this ministry. The people who were going to be touched most by his death. You know, when death draws very near for human beings, we actually realize what is very important, okay? We focus on what matters most. For pastors, the church is very important. But <laughs> when death comes very close, you realize even the chat goes, becomes a, a distant, <laughs> distant kidogo. You know, you know when, when, when a pastor dies, Rembure usi jidanganya. Hata kama we ni Sydney pastor. Ukikufa, elders wanakutana, wanaitana araka. Si kupanga mazishi yako, apana. Who is taking over? Sita Meldoret. It said, Mwenyata moderate. Kutakuwa na pasta waku moderate funeral service yako. Eh, people have moved on. Because whether you are alive or not, Sita Meldoret has to continue. So you realize when you are about to die, you say, who, who is going to be touched my, by my death? Believe you me, Sita Meldoret will not be touched as much. First, your family. So you call them close. And maybe a few friends here. And then you tell, you don't waste time. You don't joke when you are about to die. You say serious things. So John chapter, Jesus knew he didn't have much time. So he talked, so we better take seriously John chapter 15, 14 and 15. Because these are his last words. Because actually, towards the end, he says, now the time for me to be betrayed. Actually, he sends Judas out. 
and tells Judas to go quickly and do what he's supposed to, to do. Are we together? And when you look at John chapter 14, my actually my main text is John chapter 14 from verse 15 to 23. Some of the deep things that Jesus talks to his disciples about. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be, to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, he calls that advocate the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you, know, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Bef uh, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves, who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world. Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and will, we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which you hear is not mine but the fathers, the fathers who sent me. Jesus talks about very difficult things, mysteries, right here. He says that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I am going, but I will come back to you. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm go not going to leave you as orphans. Actually, when you continue reading, you realize that Jesus says, it is good that I go. In fact, when I go, we are going to be more together than we are now. Why? Because I'm going to be with you and I'm going to be in the Father, and you are, there, there is an intimacy. Praise the Lord. God intended an, a close relationship with humanity. But this, of course, as you know, in Genesis chapter 3, we lost it. And God began a work to restore that relationship. That's why he called Abraham. And what is interesting is God, when he gave dominion, he says, we, we are going to have this relationship. We're creating this being in our own image after our own likeness. And let them have dominion, authority over the earth. God cannot do anything on earth unless we, he partners with us because he has given us the authority over the earth. But we gave that to the devil in Genesis, of course, through our parents, our first parents, Adam and Eve, and things started to fall apart disobedience, 
He says here that if you obey my commandments, if you obey me, the same thing that he says in Genesis 1, that if you are going to obey, if you don't eat from the fruit that is in the middle, then this relationship is going to continue. But if you choose autonomy from me, to be autonomous, to be independent from me, then you will die. We will be separated. That's actually what God means. A spiritual death, a separation from God. Because we were created to have, it was not just God coming to walk in the garden in the cool of the day. It was a, 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 a mysterious relationship where God, who is spirit, was actually in Adam and Eve spiritually. Okay? It was in Adam and Eve spiritually so that when they disobeyed, there was that spiritual separation that caused death, spiritual death in Adam and Eve. And so God begins a work from Genesis 3 to restore that relationship. And because he cannot, because he gave up authority on earth to, 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 to humanity. He has to work with human beings to restore that relationship. And that's why we see again and again God getting a man, a human being, to partner with him for his agenda to come to pass. We see him calling Abraham and walking with Abraham. Why? Because he wants to restore back that relationship. But he cannot do it any other way. Are we together? Because he has lifted, God, the Bible says, that he has lifted his word above his throne. He has to keep his word. He has given dominion to man. That remains. He ca it cannot be changed. Because there's so much at stake. Are we together? Yes. You know what? Because God, the word of God, and, and I'm coming to this in a minute, the word of God is so important. All that we see in the physical realm came from the word. The word is a seed. As God speaks his word, he, it's like he's throwing seeds on the ground. And as he spoke, things begin, began to happen. And we have that same power. Okay? The power of death and life is in the tongue. We can speak life, we can speak death from our tongue. We are gods. And so the, the word of God is so important to him because he understands the power that is in the word. And it cannot be played with. And so Abraham comes And we see Israel coming into the scene. And we see even in Abraham, God cared so much about relationship. He wanted, you know, he had a covenant with Abraham. And God is a covenant keeping God. He keeps his word. He, entered into, he enters into covenant with Abraham. Why? Because he, he doesn't want mechanical. He doesn't want an abstract thing. It is not about rituals. It's about relationships. And so he tells Abraham, he tests even Abraham, is he committed to this relationship? He says, 
says to Abraham, I want your son. Your only son. And Abraham had got it. He knew it was not just superficial thing. This is a serious thing. And he knew when God says he wants Isaac, he means it. And he knew that he is a covenant keeping God because he said that he will give him children like sun on the seashore, like the stars in the sky. He was willing to trust him even with the death of Isaac because this was a serious relationship. And comes, there comes Isaac. Then Jacob, God even when Jacob is running, he's very, God is very careful as he chooses whether to continue to go with Esau or Esau or Jacob. He wants a man who can be committed to relationship. And as Jacob is coming back from Laban's home, God puts things right with him as he comes back to Canaan because he is a covenant man. A partner with God in fulfilling his agenda. And Israel enters into the scene and Israel does not understand. The children of the Israel did not understand. God brings them out and God shows himself to them that they are not just like anybody else. They are a special people to him. God says to them, I will be your king. I want to have an intimate relationship with you. But they don't. They were not getting it. And because God is very serious about relationship, he says only those who are going to be serious with me will go on with me into Canaan. And so he finishes all the nation of Israel. It is about relationships. And when you are not serious with the relationship, there's no point of us moving forward. That's, that's, like, that's what God is saying. And he's willing to go with two people, Joshua and Caleb, people who had recognized. You know, God is clearly states why. He chooses Caleb. He says, Caleb loved God wholeheartedly. He was committed to God wholeheartedly. He was committed to this relationship. We don't hear much why Joshua, because Joshua's case is very clear. See in the book of uh, Exodus that when Moses went to the tent of meeting, into the tabernacle to meet with God, he would meet with God, and once they were done with God, Joshua, Moses would come out and go back to his tent. The Bible says, but Joshua, the son of Nun, Nun <laughs> did not leave the tent of meeting. He stayed in the presence of God. This was someone who got, he got it. That this was about relationships. And by the time we see the children of Israel, when Jesus came, they had missed it. They thought it was about a bunch of laws. They thought about, they thought it was about rituals. Outward, abstract, superficial things. And Jesus says, no, no, you've missed it. 
You've missed it. We see this with Nicodemus as he comes to Jesus and says Jesus to Jesus, how do we enter, it, do, enter eternity? How do we attain eternal life? And Jesus explains to him, he says, you have to be given birth to. It is a spiritual thing. That's what Jesus says. This is a spiritual and explains. It's a work of the spirit to be born again. Being born again is to be adopted. To enter the kingdom of God, you've got to be adopted into the family of God. Because only gods can relate with God. That union, that spiritual union, union has to be restored for you to enter the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus is not getting. Why? Because they had missed it. Jesus says, you are the teacher of Israel, yet you don't understand these things. You know, Jesus, when he's about, as you continue reading in John chapter 14, Philip says to Jesus, show us the Father. And Jesus tells Philip, Philip, I've been with you all these days, yet you don't know me. You don't know me, Philip. You know, we may have been in the church, but we don't get it. We don't get it. You know, when I first worshipped with Sitam, I used to go to Sitam Valley Road. And I would see these banners. And I used to wonder, you know, it would be something different. I didn't realize that every year it would be different. And I would just look at it and wonder what it was. And you know, for many people, that's just something that they don't get it. For some, they think it is decoration. This is how Sitam every year decorates their, 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 their pulpits. Let me tell you, it is, it is, it is, it is serious. This itakuwa hapo mumeweka mumejaza hapa. Mwaka mpaka inaisha na watu wengine hawashiki. Watu wengine wanaona tu decoration wanaona wow. Wow, ameweka grips this time. This time round. I wonder what they will put next year. I knew you were pounding this pulpit in his presence. Why? Because this is spiritually conceived. It is spiritual things. It is about relationship. We cannot be masked in his presence unless we want a relationship with him and we are committed to a relationship with God. Is in, in their conditions. We don't come to God on our own terms. We come on his terms. Now, stop sharing with a gentleman recently who was telling me, you know, um, he was having issues and I said, uh, you know you can't do this. He, he wants to get another wife. 
Si kap sabet si el doret. Okay, so don't be anxious. So to go church and a serious service. Jama, mina muona. Amekuja, amekuja, amekuja. Unaona hii viti. Unajua watu wa karibi yangi hizi viti. Unaona hizi mumeweka, mume toa hizi za white. Mukaweka za black nyuma ya elders. Hapo. Unajua elders ndio wanakuja kukaa hapo peke. Ukiona mtu wanakuja mpaka hapo. Hey, those are all people. Those are serious people. So I see, amekuja, amekuja, ameka hapo. Anona, Okay, alikuja peke yake. Akakuja akaka. Na naona ame kuna dada ameka hapo. Kidogo naona huyu si mshiriki mwingine ameka hapo. They have a relationship. Na mimi najua the wife. Kidogo kidogo naona the wife aku huko nyuma. Na jamaa ko serious hapa mbele amekaribia pasta sana. Hey, baada ya service nikamwambia ni aje. Naona huyo tena ni nani? Akasema ni bibi yangu, ni mama wangu. Kuona wawili. Nikamwambia but uh, si, si tu, you know in God kwa huyu this relationship that we have entered to iko na conditions. Kamwambia hiyo inaitwa adultery. Na Mungu alisema you cannot have a relationship with me and break my you have to you, you know when you enter a relationship hata mimi leo na Reverend Petronila hapa tukikuwa marafiki na sisi ni marafiki Imagine Petronila sisi ni marafiki eh and we are very serious friends. To say, my sister, to look at pastors, pamoja apa elder, sita elder, okay? And I just lead the pastors to watch it. We in ngu musa na kupata wa wili kwa assembly moja. But let's just use that example. Sasa tu kuapa. Alafu mi na kupigi asibu. Pastor Petronila. Hey, unajua. Mimi ninaenda sita mkisumu nina nimekuwa transferred ninaenda actually kesho nilikuwa nakupigia tu kukuambia mimi na hama kesho Petronila unajua wakati we entered a relationship hakuna mahali tuliandika ati mimi sasa nikipigwa transfer niende mahali pengine lazima nikuambie immediately <laughs> Nikipata barua kutoka kwa elders lazima nikuje ni kwa nikuambie. Hakuna mahali imeandikwa lakini you get offended. Why? Because whether we, it is written I, you know there, there is eco eco guidelines ya hii uhusiano. You will become offended. Na sasa ya Mungu wacha ya Mungu sasa. Ya Mungu it is not assumed. God has given us the Bible. If this relationship is going to thrive, these are the guidelines. So wewe kuja kusema mimi mimi bado ni Mkristo. Hata kama nimevunja Are we together? And it is interesting. If you, you know, sometimes we do things. It may not be serious, as serious as this one. I've just given you the example. It may, it may not be that bad. But how, what are some of the things we don't take seriously? You know, when you read actually in the, in, in the Gospel of John, what the commandment that God that keeps coming up here is love. He says you have to love others. 
And you have to love God. And yet we take this lightly. And this love, when you look at John chapter 15, Jesus says, as I have loved you, love one another. It is not just love vile unataka. Apana, unapenda vile yesu ame. He has shown us how to love. That's why he came. To give us, to show us how to live this life. And so this relationship that God is inviting us to is not vague like you yangu na petronila. Ati petronila anakuwa offended. Unajua sita muliza, yaani ya, kwanu nakasirika, kwanu tuliandika wapi? Ata mi najua. Eh? Na hiyo usiano yangu na Petronila itavunjika siku hiyo. Because Petronila atajiuliza kweli sisi ni marafiki. Eh? Inakuaje Pastor Judi anapata barua kutoka kwa elders. Na aje niambia. Are we together? But for God, they're very clear. He says, Jesus says, let's just go to, as we bring this to an end. In chapter five, in chapter five, of the book of John. We together. We want our way. It is hard. It may not be that serious. Okay? I will treat my wife the way I want. Or I will treat my husband the way I want. I will treat my colleagues at the place of work the way I want. No, 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 no. There are guidelines. You've got to love them the way I have loved you as Jesus. How did he love? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So you don't love people when they are doing things the way you want. Forgiveness is key. Are we together? And so he says, I'll send the Holy Spirit to you. The Holy Spirit does not just come to help us obey the commandments of God. He comes also to restore the God nature in us. Because we've got to be, re our minds have to be renewed and this is the work of the Holy Spirit. So the, there, there are things that we've got to do as believers. You're telling me, so how do I maintain this relationship? We've got to be renewed. We've, that God nature in us has to be restored. And that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's why he has come. The second thing. We've got to be committed to keeping the commandments. And this being enabled by the Holy Spirit. But we've got to surrender. We have to give up our will. We have to be willing. And how do we give up our will? It is hard. We've got before we are immersed in the relationship, we've got to be immersed in his word. His word is the seed that is planted in us and it creates the right environment. When we dwell in this word, by the way, the word of God, what separates The women and girls, and the girls and the men and the boys when it comes to Christianity. 
It is the word. People who are immersed in the word. And I'm not talking about you waking up and thrashing through so that you think that you've read the word. No. It is a spiritual thing where the Holy Spirit creates a hunger for the word of God, where you can sit for hours and hours studying this word and thinking about it. And you, you, you're like, pastor, that, that's, that's the work of pastors. Only pastors can do that, can read the word for hours and hours. Let me ask you, when you have a problem in your marriage or at your place of work, you carry that burden the whole day. You are driving and you're thinking and you're thinking. You find someone an Ajiongelesha. And it is about that marriage, that problem. You can dwell on that problem 24-7. You know, you can dwell on the word of God 24-7. You worry 24-7. You can dwell on this word 24-7 if you want to. This is the seed that produces, that the Holy Spirit uses to produce the God nature in us. Hallelujah. For us to have a relationship with God, the God Nature in us has to be restored. The image and likeness of Christ has to be restored in us. And that, for that to happen, we've got to be willing to surrender our will and let the Holy Spirit do a work in us. And there's no better way We've got to create a conducive environment for that by dwelling in the word. Of course, prayer has a, is, its place. Fasting has its place. And serving and other things. But the word of God is key. For us to be immersed in his presence, we've got to have a relationship with God. And in our brokenness, in our human nature, we cannot have a relationship with God. All the filth has to be done away with. The Holy Spirit has to do the work of cleansing so that the God nature in us is restored. May God bless you.